If you uh, follow me on Instagram, you probably know this already, but uh, I spend a lot of time riding my bike through London, um, pretty much from east to west. So I do a lot of commuting. I probably do around 80 to 100 miles a week doing this. And um, I've learned a few things. These few things that I'm gonna discuss today aren't just for like city, London kind of commuting. It's generally commuting in general, generally in general. But instead of me just kind of waffling, let's go straight into it. So this is five must-haves when commuting on a retro or modern bike. So my opinion, and I guess all of this video is my opinion, um, one of the most important things you need to have are the correct tools. It's no good just kind of having a multi-tool and a punch repair kit if those aren't gonna fix that bike. This may not be quite a stretch for someone on a more modern bike because generally if you have a multi-tool, you've probably got everything you need. But for my retro fans, think a little bit about what the bike you're riding. Uh, some of the bikes I ride have quick release, but some of them have 15 millimeter bolts on the wheels. So I need to make sure I have a spanner. So if I get a flat, I can get the wheel off. I suppose this is also maybe more of a problem for people like me who have many bikes. So you need to make sure your toolkit or your you know your tools that you have on your bag which is a toolkit have all the right tools so you can always fix any of the bikes you're riding so here's mine uh, i have been carrying this muck off bag for ages now um they're really cheap and they're quite good for this sort of thing so this is what i've been using um i go through multi tools like nobody's business um simply just because i see one i like and i buy it uh, this is a hooray one uh kind of a cool name hooray uh it is pretty much got everything i would ever need on most of my bikes um it's got all the different uh allen key parts you might need um it has got even like extra ones so you've got the big ones and stuff I'm saying big ones because I don't actually know what that is it's probably like a five uh, but it's got screw drivers on it as well but the main thing for this one um, is it has a chain tool built into it um, which also has a spoke wrench on it so it has pretty much anything you need most of the time if you uh, if you uh, need a chain tool especially on commuting um, you've already uh, done something bad uh, your bike should the chain should be good enough just for commuting but I find that uh, this helps my peace of mind when I'm riding uh, but the spoke key on it is one of the main reasons I bought this one in particular uh, because uh, I go off on and off a lot of curbs because I'm reckless and um, I sometimes put my wheels out true so this helps me if they start rubbing mid-ride uh, which uh, a lot of people that have ridden, in me, ridden with me in the past know that mid-ride sometimes my rear wheel just start going into the frame because I ride massive tires and uh, I'm reckless. One of the other things I carry in my uh, toolkit, apart from some more specific to the bikes, um, is actually a 10 mil spanner. Um, this is pretty much only gonna be for the retro guys out there, um, especially if I'm riding like a real crusty retro bike, uh, potentially with cantilever brakes. If I ever wanna adjust those brakes or adjust the pads, I like to be able to do it on the fly. Um, so I carry this little 10 mil spanner uh, so I can go in there and change the, adjust the pads. You'd be pretty unlikely if it wasn't 10 mil, but pretty much any cantilever brakes that I've ever worked on are 10 mil, so that should do it. The last two things uh, to think about when you are uh, building your perfect toolkit is uh, punches. So one is gonna be patches uh, i like to use these park tool ones uh, they uh, are basically just pre-glued so you just peel them and stick them on which i really like um, and then a tire lever um, i only ever carry one mainly because i lose them pretty quickly this is a pedro's one you can see i've had it very long time they last forever they're really really good um, but uh, i only really tend to carry one apart from the fact that I've lost the other one, is because most of my tires are really easy to come on and off. Uh, I'll talk about tires a bit more in a minute, but um, yeah, that's why I only have one. Uh, the other one, the last thing you must have is a pump. If you can't pump your tires back up again, what the point? What the point? Next one is bike locks. Bike locks is a pretty obvious one, um, but Think about where you're locking your bike, and then that should help you determine which bike lock you might want to take. 
Uh, I lock my bikes up in one or two places, a very secure place, a not so secure place. If you are someone like me who has a secure place to lock their bike, whether it be at the house, the office, the, your workplace, whatever you might be going with that bike, um, my favorite thing to carry with me is a Z-Lock. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, if you follow me anywhere, or see me on my bike, I always have one of these hanging off my bike. I absolutely adore these things, um, and they're really, really simple. For anybody who's gonna say down in the comments now that someone just snipped this off of a pair of scissors, one, takes more than a pair of scissors, uh, and two, this is purely just for someone that's secure, or a five seconds lockup. Um, this is a this is a deterrent. It's not necessarily going to protect your bike from the, a master thief. Uh, the other one that I regularly use is a, another one from Hiplock, which is the switch. Uh, the switch is a folding lock, so it folds out when you need it, um, and it goes on your kind of bottom mount. Um, there's actually an interchangeable mount that they have, so you can put it from this to a bottle without any tools. It's so, so, so good. But if you're someone who rides maybe e-bikes or very modern bikes or something very expensive and you want that extra bit of protection, Hiplock also have their new indestructible lock or the grinder proof lock, uh, the D1000. Um, it's probably on the screen right now. Um, it's a pretty hefty lock, so this is something you need to be pretty willing to carry, but it's gonna protect your bike. So if you are believing it somewhere that is a little bit less secure, and you want to kind of protect it from those angle grinder idiots that turn up and steal nice bikes, um, these are worth checking out. Uh, on that note, I'm actually a rider for Hiplock uh, for this year, uh, so if you do want to get some money off your uh, locks from Hiplock, uh, use this code here um, for 15% off at checkout. Uh, there's a link down below to so help you go to the website. Uh, they have tons of different cool locks, Lots of different ones for different types of bikes, different kind of riders, different kind of situations. And they also have some pretty cool accessories that we will be talking about in an upcoming video. So if you're into this sort of stuff or like the hip lock brands, which I know a lot of people do, uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video in the future. The next one is tires. Tires are a hard one, and I feel like I could probably do a whole video on tire choice, and maybe that's something we'll do in the future. Um, but the, there's a few, there's a few little rules or things to think about when you're choosing your tires. Uh, one is obviously the size. If you're someone who's riding a 700C wheel and you've got quite thin, narrow tires, and you're commuting on it it's gonna get rough, especially if you're riding in London or somewhere rural, somewhere that's got rough roads. Um, if you're commuting, commuting, in my opinion, is all about comfort. So you wanna fill those rims, you wanna fill that, those arches on that bike and make sure you've got the biggest tires you can get. For my more retro guys, you've probably using a mountain bike or something like that um, that has bigger tires already. So in, in that case, you're probably thinking more slicks instead of knobblies. Um, my big, Number one slicks at the moment are um, the WTB Fix Slicks. Uh, fix Slicks are the ones that I used on my 100 mile ride that I did in the previous video, which I'll link above right now. One of those sides. Um, I absolutely adore them. They're some of my favorite tires I've ever ridden. Um, they're super comfortable, they're super fast, they're fast rolling, that's the same thing, just said two different ways. Um, and uh, they're pretty puncher resistant, hence the thick part. Um, although, if you are monkey shred, uh, you've already had one puncture on them uh, and then uh, you rode them the next day and almost slipped at the canal and almost ended up in a canal. Um, and he only bought them because I said they were so good. So I do feel slightly guilty. Just, just a little bit. Um, I kind of want to go into tyres in more detail, if I'm really, really honest. So I think I will make a tyre video. It's probably gonna be more around 26 inch bikes more than anything else, just cause that's what I love and that's what I do around here mainly. But um, the main thing is think about your tire choice. It's all, it should be about comfort and speed, but not speed win race, speed as in, you don't wanna be on your bike all morning. You just wanna to get to work so you can get home, right? One of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to cycling and commuting and city riding and whatever that might be is luggage. And I'm not talking your wheelie suitcase that you drag along behind your bike because that'll be well weird. 
I'm talking about backpacks, slings, whatever that might be. Um, if you follow me on Instagram or even on here, potentially you might have seen it in the past, I pretty much only ride chrome things. Uh, you can actually see a little chrome bag there at the moment, which I may talk back in a second. Um, but I absolutely adore chrome. So this is more about chrome more than just bags in general. Um, but there's two main bags that I use. First one is a cadet. A cadet is a sling type bag that looks like this. Uh, it goes over your shoulder, but then the most important part is this bit here. This bit then clips in together like this, which stops it when it's tight. It then doesn't swing right round your back. It stays in one place. It is amazing. One of my favorite things about these bags. But they're also really easy then to swing around, get your keys to get back into the house, or get your lock out to lock up your bike, get a snack out whilst you're sat at the red lights, whatever that might be. Highly rate these. But if you're someone like me who likes to carry quite a lot of things, sometimes this doesn't quite cut it. So I use my barrage. This is my duck camo one. It's super, super cool. It's completely waterproof. There's no way anything's going to get in there is going to get wet. And believe me, I've tested this bit. But you can fill it for days. It's got a cargo net on the on the front for like if you I often run and use it to go get packages and stuff. Maybe on the way to or from work. Sometimes your bag's full, so you can just stuff stuff in there as well, which is really good. It's got a side pocket as well for putting your hand in there and putting stuff. That's where I usually put my tools and my keys and things. Um, but then it's also got a harness on it, so when you have got it on, you can clip it on and you're secure again. But uh, there's as far as I'm concerned, and let me know in the comments below, but there's no better bag for cycling in than a chrome bag. I've said it. The last thing, and people often have very, very different opinions to this, um, is music. I love riding with music especially if it's raining or if it's a bit cold or miserable or if I'm in a bad mood. Cycling generally is my happy place. It's my zen, it makes me feel better again. But if I'm super moody, having some metal or some nice music or whatever that might be to kind of like energize me a little bit better, uh, I adore it and it's kind of like my thing. I can't really do it, do it without it. Oh, rubbish sentence. There's obviously two ways you can do this. The one way is using headphones. The thing with headphones, you then can't really hear anything around you. So I don't like using headphones. What I like using is a speaker. But then everybody around you can hear your music. So that's the other side of the argument. Basically, you either can't hear anything or everybody can hear what you're playing. People will get annoyed about both things. There's lots of different arguments and opinions on it. For me, I love speakers. I think they're really good. This one is a UE Roll. Um, I don't think you can buy these anymore. Uh, someone recently asked me where I get my speaker from and I couldn't find them a link, but it's by UE, which is like Logitech. Um, and I think this one was called the Roll because it's disc shaped and rolls, I guess. And that's it. That's um, my top five must haves for commuting on a retro or modern bike. I don't know if I've actually called it that because it's quite a mouthful, but I think it gets my point across. Um, if you enjoyed this video, do let me know down in the comments. Perhaps give it a little likey um, if you likey it and that. Um, and then if you uh, want to see more of this content, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you can't wait until next week's video, perhaps you should watch this one. This one is a build video and it is very, very good. It's, it's particularly good. It's particularly good. I can't say it differently.